Thank you very much to Dan and to Paul for the invitation. Uh, I'm just here to present this book that I recently published uh, uh, with Rutledge. It started uh, with the scholarship that I got from FIFA to investigate on agents. So uh, the real necessity of a book like this starts from the point that there were no book on agent except of one written uh, in US uh, based mainly on a legal approach. Although I'm mainly a, an economist type of academic, I, I decided to write this book to provide more information about the profession from an historical point of view, from a sociological point of view, from uh, a legal point of view, from a business point of view, and then from an evolutionary point of view regarding third party ownership. The classical approach of agents is to criticize agents, to say that they are the evil of uh, the industry. And we can say this year, the last figure released by the FIFA TMS was that 1.1 billion of uh, dollars were paid to intermediaries since 2013 on international transfer only. People always say these are money that goes out of football. Which industry has money that stays in the industry? None. Money goes and money comes in. The problem in football is that the majority of the money that comes in are lost and they go out easily without any check or without any proper transparency. Uh, why agent exist? Exist because player has a bargaining power. And this bargaining power has to be respected, has to be accepted, and that has to be protected. That's why agent should be protected, should be improved, and should be really qualified. What happened last year with the FIFA regulation and reform was simply to admit uh, we are nowadays only an event industry. We just care about the World Cup. We are not able to, or, and we don't want to regulate the profession of agent. And so we step back. So nowadays, the intermediary industry, as it is called, accept conflict of interest and goes straight away against the theory. So people usually say, ah, we don't need theory, we don't need this, we need practical example. Well, practical example don't have any meaning if we don't link them with theory. So the theory of the conflict of interest that is clearly described by the principal agent uh, theory, nowadays is completely disrespected. An agent can simply represent clubs and players at the same time and are not anymore qualified. And we always talk about the importance of having people in football that are expert in legal aspect, in psychological aspect, uh, or in social, or sociological aspect, or in economical aspect. So a key figure next to the player that is the center of uh, the, the business of football and the world of football, that are the players, is not anymore regulated and is not anymore properly supported. And what is uh, sad when you see something like this is that two reports on the transfer system and on player profession, sport agents profession in Europe have been released by the European Commission. These two reports has never been really uh, looked through from the sporting federation as it should be. So all the reform that we are seeing in the sport agents industry are simply made against what this report have suggested to do. So uh, the importance of this book, uh, from my opinion, was to open up to a lot of academics the opportunity to better understand the industry, looking at Europe, uh, having uh, a mapping constantly how agents operate, who they are, and also to enlighten that it's, uh, it's really important from all the aspects, historical, sociological, legal, uh, and so on, that it's very important that 
also who is part of football starts to know very well who are agents, especially the family, especially the player. Fa family and players, especially at the youngest age, they don't know about agents. They don't know who they are. They don't know who, how they operate. And this creates a big, big vacuum because allow agents, especially the ones that are not in good faith, to freely operate with the support of clubs, of course, because we, we cannot forget that the power of an agent doesn't exist uh, without the support of clubs. So if they are allowed to operate like they operate most of the time, it's because clubs allows them to operate in this way. So the real importance, I think, for academia is to change our paradigm and, and, and start to think that agents are, are key and the agents shouldn't be looked uh, is in the classical way. Because with the, this reform that was recently passed from FIFA, 20 years, because the first regulation of agents was in 1994, almost 20 years of a culture that was created, although you like it or not, was simply wiped out. So uh, the real uh, meaning was to try to give a go to the academic uh, uh, environment to search more on, on this topic that I, I think that it's not just the agent. Agents are part of an holistic view that is the transfer market that by definition is not stable because the Bosma reform simply said that after 40 years, the entire market system would have been revised. And this was what FIFPRO has recently called for, a revision of the transfer market because it, there, are, there is evidence that the transfer market is not properly working at the moment. That's it. Thank you very much.